Good morning, beloveds. Ah, uh, so we have come to the end of August. <laughs> and I'm currently being yelled at by the cat. Um, I spend a lot of my time being yelled at by cats. Uh, some days she's quiet, some days she's not. It is what it is, right? You never know what you're going to get when you get a ginger. But, um... Alright, let's see what the last day in August has from Ernest and Raymond. Okay, August 31st. The title is Divine Love Loves Through Me. And the quote is, Grant that these forms may penetrate within our hearts. And that is from the Atharva Veda. A T H A R V A Veda. All right. The mood of the inf the mood of the infinite mind is one of love. The action of intelligence takes place in loving ways. What God hath wrought has been by means of love. Knowing this, I realize that the love of God uses me as a center of distri distribution. If I let my mind be a center of God's intelligence, I must also let my heart be a center of his love. Living the life of truth is a warm and joyous experience. I let God's idea rule my mind, and I let God's love act through my heart. Really, Gabby? There is nothing within me to impede the love of spirit. I now release all personal opinions about others. I let go of all hurts and prejudices. I let all, the full action of the divine love act through me and be in the, base, the basis of all human relationships. I am unified with the good in every man and all else becomes as nothing. I have no interest in other people's faults. I keep my attention on the divine possibilities, possibility within everyone. I know, uh, within everyone I know. God's love is at the center of all, and it forever moves in perfect action through all. I am blessed and prospered by divine love. It enriches my soul and prospers my consciousness. It frees me from all from the errors of human judgment and makes me know that I am one with all good. With love in my heart, I forgive and forget all untruth. The true spiritual man is all that I know of each person with whom I live, work, and play. All else is unimportant, for God's love in me is interested only in the good, the true, and the perfect. I think rightly and I love greatly. This love flowing out from me is felt rec and recognized by others. In turn, they love me and judge me according to God's standards. I live I love to get I love to let love express through me. All right. <clears throat> so there's an interesting line in kind of in the middle. I am unified with the good in every man, and all else becomes nothing. I have no interest in other people's faults. I keep my attention on the divine possibility within everyone. I have no interest in other people's faults. Um, and that... <sighs> okay. I'm, 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 I'm trying to formulate my words here. <clears throat> um... Because a whole lot of nonsense happens in the world because we're focused on each other's faults. Rather than being focused on what is good about each other. And so what they are writing in here is that how much better would it be if we focused on each other's good and strengthened each other's goods... And, and I'm not going to say ignored each other's faults, um, but 
The only person who can correct a fault is the person whose fault it is. And so you can't correct my fault. Now, if I'm unaware of it, you can kindly and gently bring my fault to my attention uh, and then I can correct it. Uh, but even in doing that, the way to do it is say, well, you do this really well. Here's what you can work on. Um, and you have to find kind, compassionate and loving ways to do it. And so what Ernest, that's exactly what Ernest is suggesting here. It's like, let's not worry about each other's faults. Let's not focus on those because really, honestly, there's nothing we can do about them. Let's focus on each other's good. Let's focus on expanding each other's good. We expand our own good. We expand each other's good. Um, and the world is really an amazing place when that happens. Uh, if we're so busy focused on each other's faults and what we're doing wrong, nothing ever gets done. And it goes back to that idea of our, where our focus goes, where our attention goes, where our pa is where our prayer goes. Well, if we're focused on each other's faults, then we're magnifying each other's faults. We're making them bigger. That's where our power is going. And so the idea is then to focus on the good and expand the good. All right? Um, and, I, and I admit, I have one huge pet peeve. Um, don't make my job harder than it is. <laughs> that's, that's my pet peeve. It's like, my job is, uh, and, and in this case, we're, I'll use the example of the, the, the job that pays my mortgage, okay? My job, it's not an easy job. It, it's not. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of information. There's a lot that I have to know and do. And if you can't help me, then the least you can do is not get in my way, not make my job more difficult. Um, and it drives me, it drives me crazy. But if I focus on that, then I'm making my own job more difficult, right? So what I want to do is focus on, okay, this is how us working together works. And let's expand that. And then ideally, naturally, any of the, the, the things that are getting in each other's way will naturally smooth out because we're focused on the good. We're focused on what's working. Uh, and so I think that that's an incredibly... Um, important point and it speaks to love because in this case if we are we are, and I and I say it and pretty much any science of mind minister is going to say it we are the divine distribution centers we are the divine action centers God loves through us so we want to focus on the good we want to focus on the good because if we're focused on the good then Everything that is not the good just kind of naturally goes back to the nothing that it was in the first place. Yet, if we focus on the not good, the, the faults, then that's where our attention goes, that's where our power goes, and they just get bigger. So, it, it isn't about ignoring them. It is about focusing on something else. Uh, that being said, feel free to not put yourself in situations of people behaving badly just because you want to see the good in them. That's one of those situations that I say it, and I will say it every time. When you want to see the good in somebody who is behaving badly, then do it from over there. You don't have to put yourself in their path of them misbehaving. Um, you are welcome to see the good in them. Please see them as the, as the godling that they are and deserving of the love of God, but you can do it from a safe space. So I, I, I always want to say that. I think one of the biggest um, faults of religion is that religion encourages us to put ourselves in harm's way to love people who aren't ready for it. Well, we can love people who aren't ready for it, but we can do it from a safe, safe place because we can love more people if we're, <laughs> if we are in a safe space. So, um, yeah, that's, that's one of my pet peeves about religion. I have a few pet peeves. <laughs> I kind of wonder where that came from, pet peeve. 
might go look that up. All right, the genesis of that idiom. All right, so divine love loves through me. Grant that these forms may penetrate within our hearts. And that is from that Veda, um, Atharva, Atharva Veda. Um, so the mood of the infinite mind is one of love. And, and that's constantly what we're saying, that love is, love, that God is love. So the mood of the infant mind is one of love. The action of the, the, the action of intelligence takes place in loving ways. That God, what God hath wrought has been by means of love. We say that we are made by love. We are made by love from love. For love. Knowing this, I realize that the love of God uses me as a center of distribution. If I let my mind be a center of God's intelligence, I must also let my heart be a center of God's love. All right. So if we're going to use the divine, the, the divine mind, then we're going to use the divine heart too. And that's really what makes life worth living is the balance of the head and the heart. Living, living the true, living the life of truth is a warm and joyous experience. I let God's ideas rule my mind and I let God's love act through my heart, which when I let God's love act through my heart, it means that sometimes I make choices that don't look sane to other people. They don't, but it's it, when done in a loving way makes the world a better place. There is nothing within me to impede the love of spirit. St power statement. I now release all personal opinions about others. It, I now release all personal opinions about others. I'm that is my uh, my attempt to go back to God's idea of you. I talk constantly about going back to, to God's idea of me. It's like, I want, if I want to know who I am, I want to go back to God's idea of me. Well, I can do the same thing for you. I can go back to God's idea of you. Am I going to know it fully? No. But if we're all one, I can get a pretty good idea if I go back to God's idea of you. And God's idea of you is based in love. I let go of all the hurts and prejudices. I let Full, I let the full action of divine love act through me and be the basis of all human relationships. I am unified with the good in every person and all else becomes not, as nothing. So that's what I'm focus on the good and everything else will fall away naturally. It'll go back to the nothing that it is. I have no interest in other people's faults. I keep my attention on the divine possibility Within everyone, I know. I keep my attention on the divine possibility of ev within everyone I know. The divine possibility. Because I know who you are. I know that you are a beloved child of God. That's what I'm going to focus on. No matter what else is going on in your life, I am focused on the fact that you are a divine, that, that you are a beloved child of God. That's where my attention goes. God's love is at the center of all and is for it and it forever moves in perfect action through all. I am blessed and prospered by divine love. It enriches my soul and pros and it prospers my consciousness. It frees me from the errors of human judgment and makes me to know that I am one with all good. In my spiritual work, in my spiritual practice, that's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on that divine love. I'm focused on knowing that I am one with all of the good. And if I'm focused on all of the good, then it's naturally going to... It's naturally going to fall out. With love in my heart, I forgive and forget all untruth. The true spiritual man, the true spiritual person is all I know of each person with whom I live, work, and play. So the true spiritual person, I know that you are a beloved child of God. I know that. And in the moments when I forget that, then when I awake again, I 
I, I make amends and I go back to knowing that you are a godling. <clears throat> All else is unimportant for God's love in me is interested only in the good. So I make amends and go back to recognizing you as a beloved child of God. And sometimes the amends I have to make are with you, and sometimes the amends I have to make are merely within my own soul. But that, sometimes it's just between me and God. Um, <clears throat> so, all else is unimportant, for God's love in me is interested only in the good, the true, the perfect, the whole. It doesn't mean you have to be flawless. It just means you get to be whole. I think rightly, and I love greatly, this love flowing out from me is, rec is felt and recognized by others. In turn, they love me and judge me according to God's standards. I let the love express through me. What are God's standards? God's standards are always going to be in love. God is not going to see the faults. God's not, because God can't. God doesn't judge. We do. <laughs> but that's because we see each other as separate entities. And that's the part of the material world. But for God, it's all one. It's all one. All right. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it? I just saw it. Hang on. it <laughs> there's so much in here okay our mission today should we choose to accept it is to keep our attention on the divine possibility within everyone that's the mission to keep our attention on the divine possibility within everyone to know every single person that we meet every single being that we meet every living thing is a beloved child of God and that might rock you back on your heels. Because it's easy to think of people as beloved children of God. But what about the four-leggeds? What about the eight-leggeds? What about the six-leggeds? What about plants? What about the trees? Are they not all beloved, beloved children of God as well? Well, in my world, they are. They absolutely are. Um, so that is the mission today. And it's the same mission every day. To look in each other's eyes and see God looking back at us. All right, beloveds. As always, I will encourage you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever that looks like. Whatever that looks like. Um, I am still dealing with the, the, the... Whatever I did to that hamstring. So... And that it's just really bloody hot. So we went for a ride today. So I engaged my mind and my body. As I do encourage you to engage your mind and your body. Um, I just did it in a more compassionate, loving, and kind way for me today. Uh, so find it. And for other people, that might be taking a nap. For other people, that might be a spa day. For other people, it might be, you know, a cup of coffee. Whatever it is. Do something loving. Do something kind. Do something compassionate for yourself. Practice it upon yourself. Because one, you deserve your own loving, kind, compassion. And two, the more you practice, the more you bank, the more you have to share with all those other godlings that come across your path who may have momentarily forgotten who they were. May have momentarily forgotten who they are. All right? So, um... Do something to engage your mind and your body. Please drink plenty of water. Uh, go get that face full of sun that I'm always talking about. Just a little bit. Five, ten minutes. I'm not asking for much. I'm not asking for much. Um, early morning. Early, early, early-ish. Um, and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven now. It is all around you. It merely awaits you. Being open to seeing it. 
being open to feeling it, being open to know, being open to balancing that head and heart. And one place we can start is seeing each other as the godlings that we are, beloved children of God. That's our state of grace, always. Okay, uh, I'm going to move into the process of my day. I'm going to encourage you to do the same. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to have a good day, a great day, an amazing day, a fantastic day. And if that is too much pressure, you can have a good day or simply just a day. Um, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. for you. I am not aware of anything going on on Tuesday uh, right at the moment. But if you want to know for sure, please email info at creativelife.org. Get on that mailing list and they will email you all the wonderful things that happen any day of the week through Creative Life, and you can always check us out on the social medias. Um, Creative Life Spiritual Center is the Facebook page, which you know if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, and the YouTube channel, and then it's Creative Life Spark on Instagram. And then we are, and then I am the Running Rev Ryan on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and that's where these are archived. Um, but there's a whole lot of good stuff on both pages, Feel f or on, uh, and both of them. Feel free to check them all out and do what you need to do to make it a good, a good day. But know that you are loved. All right, until next time.